forward to this computer. Yeah, I think it should be recording now. So welcome again to all of you. Um, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit here just to give you uh, some context about what I do here and what kind of uh, my mindset and my ideas and how I started this this sort of community. So again, it's just a it's just a community. It's a community effort to, as you can see here in the on the document, to democratize artificial intelligence research, education, and technologies. So there are a couple of efforts that we're working on together with some of um, participants in the community uh, to you know to better improve access to. Uh, this sort of technology and also to some of the research that's coming up recently. So we're working on different projects and I want to take the time today to just discuss a bit on those projects, go into a little bit into details and also give you the opportunity to um, to ask questions if you're interested uh, to collaborate with us on any of those projects. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of the, of the meeting today. Again, so my name is Elvis. Um, um, I'm living in Amsterdam, so I'm not I'm not from Amsterdam originally. I moved here like one year ago. Um, I'm originally from Belize, so that's kind of like in Central America. Uh, it's kind of neighbors with Mexico and also um, Honduras and these countries in Central America. And of course, I have good English, but I also have I speak Spanish as well, uh, very good. Um, so I don't tend to use Spanish too much, especially in, in places where I live, but I can speak Spanish as well. And you know, the good thing about it is that I can you know, use this kind of language also to help some of the um, Latin com communities. And I've been doing that over the past few years, just helping them with their initiatives and regards to like, AI efforts. And you know, this has inspired me to start a community, a more global community um, to help you know, people, give them a platform that's inclusive, open, and allow for learning and also encouraging people to uh, create high input contributions towards the field. And we, we provide guidance, we provide all sort of uh, mentoring to allow this to happen. So that's kind of uh, the, 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 the high level uh, description of what this initiative is about. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna share some links, some links here. Um, I don't know if you, any, I think we have 11, I think we can do that. So we could do a quick round of introductions just to give you a chance to introduce yourself, uh, where you're coming from, <clears throat> And you know what your interests are, and and how you found this community, and you know how do you how do you how do you extract from this community, and maybe share even some of the ways that you are, are planning to contribute, just to give me an idea. So we can start with anyone. Anyone can just go ahead. Any volunteers? No one? Yeah, hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, yeah, I'm Kesha, so I'm from Bangalore, India. I'm currently working with uh, Adobe in Advertising Cloud. So, I mean, I've been generally interested in NLP and I've been trying to get started with some research, but I haven't actually be, like, been able to do a proper research until now. So I think okay. these uh, paper reading sessions are a good start to that. I mean, it will first help me get regular with that. I do read a lot of papers, but I don't get through with like implementing them or doing research. So I right. think this will like help me like slowly ease into the thing. Okay, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good I mean that's a good motivation for for joining because that's that's kind of where we're spending a lot of time and trying to provide some sort of guidance. I know research is something that's kind of like um, they, we do that in academia a lot, uh, but I know a lot of people like practitioners they also want to get involved and and I think it's a good thing. It's a very positive thing. And that's sort of one of our ideas, just to combine these two communities and kind of bridge the gap and, and, and come up with some research projects that we can all you know, enjoy and work on. So that's one of our main things that we are trying to organize as well. So good to know. Yeah, I actually missed one more thing actually. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to like enroll for MS at Columbia University this year, of course, oh, provided like the situations nice. are fine. So nice. I hope to do some proper research. Okay, let's go. Cool. Thanks. Anyone else?
So we're doing like a, like a round of introductions for whoever wants to introduce themselves. It's totally fine if you don't want to, to speak. I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Oh, okay. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, hi, my name is Mani Kandang and um, I work in the information retrieval area and search related uh, areas. Uh, so uh, one of the thing which I uh, can help with is actually uh, um, um, to, gui to guide people with any particular, uh, you know, problem areas or data sets that they want to work on or like guide in any yeah. projects that they want to work on. So yeah. that is something that I could contribute to this community. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's mostly uh, and I, um, I, I did my, uh, I do not have any proper machine learning experience, at least like, uh, for a long period of time. So mm -hmm. only started my journey last year, uh, mm -hmm. with the fast AI community and, uh, and started learning, uh, as I go. So I typically start with the problem and then like, uh, so. That's how uh, I I'm learning. So I have I do have at least um, one thing which I do want to uh, contribute back is to you know whoever is behind me at least in their learning journey. So whatever mm -hmm. that I learned, so I do want yeah. to actually share because there are few people who have really helped me in my yeah. learning progress. So yeah. I do want the same to uh, you know whoever yeah. is behind their learning journey. So yeah. that's uh, yeah. thank you. That's, that's about it. Thank you for that, Manny. And I know Manny has, yesterday we did a paper discussion and he was pretty involved. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I also, have, this is the reason why I started this community because that's kind of sort of my motivation. Um, I, I was really fortunate to have really like smart people around me that you know, I could uh, use their skill, like learn from their skills. And I learned a lot really quickly, and very fast paced. And you know, at, at some point I was publishing papers pretty easily collaborating with people. And I thought that, you know, I kind of like, took it for granted that this was kind of easy to do, but then I realized like when I joined conferences and this sort of things, and I started to work with um, underrepresented communities, I realized that uh, there is a huge gap and there's you know a lot of uh, opportunities to help out people and, and teach them about the journey and these sort of things. So, you know, I, I could definitely relate to that. And this is one of the main reasons as well that we started this community. So very happy to hear that. Thank you. Anyone else wants to introduce themselves? Yeah, sure. I can continue. So sure. my name is uh, Victor um, from Sweden, currently working as a software engineer focusing on NLP and search in, like, quite broadly. Um, I'm one and a half year out of university where my master's was within machine learning. Um, I wrote my thesis on um, document classification. So there's lots of interesting research going on that um, quite closely relates to what I've spent like half a year or a year on. So um, currently I'm just trying to get a feel for the landscape of things that, that is going on, um, like NLP mm -hmm. in general. Um, and I've done so through like reading papers and recently started actually writing some summaries which yeah. I've on the, uh, their uh, Medium page. Yeah. Um, it's been uh, really, really nice just to like share my learnings as uh, Mani, I think, mentioned previously mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. there's lots of other people whose uh, who's writing and like, articles have taught me uh, mm -hmm. during the, um, the last month. So just trying to contribute to the same pool of knowledge um, is a, it's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah it's, great to, it's great to have you here, Victor. I mean, I, I know Victor has, uh, I, I couldn't keep up with Victor. He's just like uh, r ridiculously fast. <laughs> really cool articles, um, NLP. I, I, I cannot keep up, honestly, but that's kind of the thing that um, I really want to encourage. Like, um, don't be afraid to just, you know, try to share your knowledge. Um, obviously, we have a huge group that can help you with reviewing, editing. That's the whole point to have all these. Um, people that can help you out with sort, these sort of things. So really excellent work and, and really appreciate all of that effort that you're putting there. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Um, okay, so anyone else? Hi. 
Do you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Tonike. Um, I'm currently uh, a master's student in uh, Stuttgart, Germany, originally from uh, Georgia, the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a background, a bachelor's degree also in computational linguistics, and I did some, some research on uh, explainability and fairness. And I think that's one of the topics I'm, I'm actually interested in at the moment, but uh, I do enjoy some other topics as well, such as privacy and, and transfer learning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really interested in, in like some of the goals that have been set up for, for like this community. And I, I think yeah. there's, there's a lot of potential and uh, I would like to get involved in some of the paper summaries, maybe some yeah. tutorials and notebooks and stuff like that. Oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, welcome, you know, to this community. Um, we do have, I'm going to spend a couple of, um, I, hopefully I don't spend too much time, uh, but I do have a lot of like projects that I want to talk about. And, you know, we're going to talk about all those details um, today. So hopefully you're, you know, you got interested in any one of those ones. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, myself Shigarsa from Bangalore. So uh, this this is the first time I'm joining a community like this, and uh, I have done my course on CS two to four N, and I want to learn more about research in NLP as of now. So just join to get more insights from you all. Okay. Yeah, that's all from my side. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. No one else. Yeah, so am I audible? Yes. 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 Uh, so my name is Rachit. I am from New Delhi, India. Uh, I'm still a bachelor's student uh, pursuing electrical engineering, but uh, I'm far less experienced in research and NLP in general than you people. But uh, yes, I, I've just basically previously started with research. One of my papers would I will be presenting one of my papers in ACL this year and oh, cool. and yeah so and I'll be an upcoming research intern at Oxford and uh, yeah so um, I hope to learn a lot from you guys and contribute notebooks and papers on this. Cool, cool, great to have you here. Um, you know, congrats. You know how hard, it, how hard, how much hard work it takes uh, to publish in those conferences. Congrats on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome. Anyone else? I do want to comment something, Elvis. Is that okay? Yes. yes People sure. actually like I I I noticed that like. Um, Rashid actually published a paper, and he is saying that like it is very new because. Uh, someone like me who has never published a paper but worked on problem, it's publishing mm -hmm. a paper is not no easy task, right? So, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which is like, so what mm -hmm. I want to mention is like here people are different in their learning mm -hmm. journey yeah. and like in the contributing journey, but so uh, there is a little bit of imposter syndrome. I see that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. just, you know, it's, it's completely okay. And yeah. Once someone overcomes this particular imposter syndrome, I think like people will be like uh, will be contributing. So the more you yeah. contribute, it's uh, it, yeah. you will overcome it. Yeah, but this is a really great point. This is the reason why I have like this whole spectrum of type of projects that we're gonna that we're gonna you know start to work on because you can contribute to basically just doing things like editing if that's something that you can do. There, you can contribute in any kind of way and feel really good about it. If you, you are working towards you know, this goal where you want to help out people and you know, democratize the sort of education and research. So there's so many ways to help in, in so many levels you can participate and, and learn, right? Learn, try to learn how the process is and just develop yourself, right? I cannot really, like someone was asking me the other day, like, can we post like job listings and these sort of things? I was like, um, you know, there are communities that do that sort of thing. Um, I want to really focus on this community and help people grow. That's kind of the whole idea of it. I don't want like this sort of distractions there. It's something to consider in the future. But I think at the moment, what I want is just to you know, have this community where we can concentrate on projects and learn from each other and see you know, how we can develop our skills together. So definitely, and I think that imposter syndrome is 
it's really something that we struggle with a lot of us uh, but you know we want to help us each other and, and you know be fair to each other and in the way we talk to each other as well so that's something i want to um, really encourage anyone else has uh, anything to say before we start because let's see i'm trying to I'm trying to kind of like um hey guys uh, this is rishab here from india yes uh, so my my primary motive uh, i'm currently an undergrad student and so uh, what i find is it's really uh, i'll not say difficult but uh, as an undergrad not having much experience is really difficult to navigate through the research landscape right and uh, so that is uh, primary motivation here to learn from everyone and uh, more, more so learn about the process of uh, how much work goes into the formal process of yeah. uh, publishing a paper or publishing yeah. something which we can share with the community. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's something we're trying to do, uh, as we mentioned before. Uh, just to commit the whole process of what it takes, you know, paper reading sessions, first you read papers, then you start to do some sort of implementation. Um, as a group or on your own. I think group works are kind of like underrated. Working in groups is pretty, it's a lot of fun. Actually, uh, for my experience, my experience, um, that's that, that's kind of where I did the most and where I contributed the most when I worked with uh, with groups. Um, and that is the reason also why I thought it made sense to just create this huge group where we can help each other. You, you never know who's interested, you know, in, in whatever you want to work on. So. That's, that's pretty special as well, to have a group like this where we can just have that discussion. Anyone else want to introduce themselves? So we're going to do maybe eight more minutes here just to give a half an hour of introductions, just to give the space or floor to anyone. Hey, hi everyone. Um, yes. I'm Sharon. Yeah. I'm uh, really fascinated by NLP. So I wanted to understand how it works and how it's different from other areas of yeah. uh, machine learning yeah. and uh, I, would, I would very much want to contribute as uh, to the community either through notebooks or uh, github and uh, yeah the, and learn and uh, learn and learn with others yeah basically cool, cool. welcome and, uh, yeah and elvis uh, i wanted to say yeah one of the um, one of the meetings you can do the um, or what I say, uh, walk through or something like that of the fundamentals, fundamentals of NLP chapter one. Mm. Okay. Uh, that, that notebook maybe you can uh, also introduce to others and uh, yeah, maybe give a small walk through kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, we we have that as I have that listed as one of the projects um, to build more interactive content because I know just polishing a notebook is sometimes not enough for everyone. And I know people yes. learn with different mediums, so I'm quite aware of that. And this is the reason why we're having this meeting, just to see if any, anybody would be interested in that. Um, you know, working with me together, or whatever, or, or they want to take on it on their own, uh, whichever way. But I think a watcher would be really cool to have for that notebook. Yeah. I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else want to introduce themselves? Yes. Okay. All right. So, okay, Every, everything went quiet. So I assume no one else wants to speak. All right. So let's let's begin the, the meeting officially here. So I shared some information about what it is, right? And then we, we shared a little bit of what you know, some of us our motivation for kind of joining the community and, and some of the things that you were speaking about. You know, I can relate to all of that. And that's one of those, those are the, some of the main reasons why we kind of started this. Um, and, you know, these are some of the, some of the links you can get access to the stuff that we're doing here. Get, just, just get to know more about um, our, our efforts. And also I think the GitHub page, uh, our GitHub organization is kind of giving you, will give you more details because everything is, it's, it's kind of stored there and maintained there. So one of the things that with this community that may be different from others, is that um, I'm trying to build something that is quite transparent. What does that mean? Um, if you're gonna have this sort of meetings, I wanna make sure that anyone can get access to these sort of meetings, whether it be like via notes, like how I have it here, or you know, through a video recording. I just want every you know, step of the process to be as transparent as possible because I think this will help out people that are getting started and maybe people that are not so confident to speak or something like that, but they have that material ready available to just review whenever they want. 
So I really want the kind of thing where we have this kind of transparent effort. That's one of the ideas. And then, you know, as we go a little bit down here, um, so the whole idea of this meeting was to kind of introduce some of the, the projects and some of the like roles and also ways you can contribute um, officially to the, to the um, initiative. So here we have what is called the account for contributors, basically to lead and own projects. So currently I've been trying to work on so many projects and what I realized is that, you know, I cannot do it anymore by my own. Um, this is just growing up and, and it's just, I, I really need help from, from you, you guys who came here. Um, so I'm really hoping that uh, some of these things are interesting for you and you, know, you, you, you want to contribute um, in any of the projects. So some of the things that uh, identify here are very important for people that want to lead and own projects. There are many projects. I'll talk about that in a, in a bit. Um, you know, take ownership of the projects, meaning that you decide that you want to go ahead and, and start to manage and sort of maintain this project and all the different artifacts related to it. Uh, the GitHub project is very important because everything is maintained there. Everything, even our calls for contribution, everything is on the GitHub organization because I say transparency is really important for us in, 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 in this vision to democratize things. And then there is also of course brainstorming um, how to improve and grow projects. Just now I had a, someone share this idea of uh, maybe sharing some kind of video watcher or something like that. I think those are the sort of things that you know we can brainstorm as, as a team, as a group and to, to be able to improve those projects. Um, and also, of course, diversity in ideas is something that I, I want to encourage here because I can come up with ideas, but I don't think my ideas are always the best. So I want to have that discussion with you to, to, to make the most use of our time and be productive with our time as well because we have our own kind of jobs, our daily jobs. So that's kind of very important. And down here we have, of course, um, invite and encourage community to participate, volunteer. This is kind of, I think, really one of the hardest tasks here because obviously, <clears throat> Again, not everyone is busy, you know, with this concept of everyone is busy, but people, people want to find communities. We have been seeing a lot of people joining the community. They want to be part of something. They want to help, you know, ideally that's, that's kind of something that's very natural to us. We want to help our communities and be able to um, you know, help them through the journey of learning, right? whatever it is, in this case, NLP or, or machine learning in general. Um, reporting progress, I think will be very important here as, as you, take lead on own projects. You, we want to do some regular meetings and just to discuss what kind of progress we have and share ideas about the sort of things that we're working on. And we have been doing this like kind of informally in, in the back with some of you. Um, some of you are, are publishing things and we communicate and, and we always uh, kind of share how, how we can improve these things. But I want to just open it up for everyone to have access to uh, these sort of things because I think it's, it's pretty useful um, getting back to that transparency point. And lead the effort successfully, responsibly, obviously lead the effort successfully, but I think successfully will only come if we, if we work as a group and we have all ideas on the table that we can talk about and see how we can move forward. And responsibly means that we wanna make sure that anything that we do, we do it in a responsible way. Um, we are doing things that help our communities. Um, so yeah, engaging with people and we wanna make sure that we use the right language, the right tone and this sort of thing. So we wanna do it in a responsible way as well. Very important. Um, on the volunteering side, I think what I refer to as volunteer, because uh, volunteer is very is a very general term, uh, they, they could be considered individual contributors. So what, what, what do these refer to? Well, you know, you, you may not want to or are not interested in really owning a project, but you're just interested to contribute to something. And there are so many of you that have been doing that already. Um, that's perfectly fine, you know, and, and, and you work with someone that's kind of leading that project, or you can even lead your own as well. This, this doesn't have to be... Uh, there doesn't have to be that kind of um, um, you know, strict uh, relationship between a lead and, and an individual contributor. You can be your own individual contributor. Uh, for as long as you know you are you're kind of helping us with the sharing your progress and your ideas and stuff like that, and have an open discussion. That's kind of really helpful. Okay, and then responsibilities will be based on the specific projects involved. So now I'm get, I'm gonna get to that projects. So individual contributors can be researchers, writers, editors, engineers. Uh, whatever it is that you're helping on, those are individual contributors. So the difference between this one and the leads are that the leads are responsible basically for making sure that everything is on time, schedule, and these sort of things. And we make sure that when we say we want to publish something, that we publish it on time, and making sure that we always <clears throat> um, 
Uh, reporting that progress, because that's very important for some of our projects, right? We're promising our community to do different things and helping them out. But I think just to help hold ourselves accountable, that's kind of very important part. Okay, any, any questions so far on this one? So for today, at least what we want to do is we want to identify leads. Right. I know some of you have already started to do a, like a lot of help. I really appreciate that. I mean, it takes a lot of time, like of your own time. And, you know, I have even seen some people just take the effort to just lead and contribute and moderate. So that's really cool to see. And, and I really want to make that, um, I really want to make that more like um, official in, in the sense that, of course, if there's some project that's happening, you, know, you can lead over that project and own it and, and work together with individual contributors. Um, so identify teams of individual contributors, which I think is kind of the, the most important role here. Um, we're all individual contributors in some sense. Um, that's, very, that's very important. <clears throat> and also be able to meet uh, with leads and individual contributors. Um, you know, we are going to see how we can better schedule uh, to talk about the different projects that we're going to start to work on. And so there's something that we have to work on together and kind of um, agree on some kind of schedule or, or regular meetings that we can hold. Um, we don't want to spend too much time on meetings and this and that. We're going to do very short meetings just to kind of discuss things quickly because I know everyone is quite busy. But just to you know have a, have have a time to chat with each other and make sure that um, we're we're on the right on the right track with all um, with all the projects. Okay. So one thing I want to ask you um, is if you have edits right to this particular document, is that you write your name or you can directly send me, I think you should send me a direct message on Slack if you're interested to contribute any one of these projects because what something I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create separate groups um, in the Slack channel. All of them will be open, of course, uh, but you will know that that particular group is where we are working on a particular project. All of that stuff I will, I will work on uh, later this week and I'll put those, that information in this particular document. Uh, but just send me a message, just showing your interest in whatever, whatever project you wanna work on and I will talk about those projects in a bit. And also, just put your name down here if you have edits. Um, I, I will have some slots here where you can just add your name, and then we will have a, like one-on-ones or, or even group discussions to discuss you know, how we can move forward. And propose some strategy and plan to execute. I know this is very scary. You know, it's nothing too serious to be honest. Um, just discuss ideas and how, what kind of thing that we want to do in the in the future. Maybe we want to do a tutorial. Uh, put a timeline. What are we, how, when do we want to execute it? Do we want to do it in multiple languages? Just, just have a plan around the things that we do. I think planning is so, so crucial here um, because we don't want to be wasting our time. So we want to make sure that anything that we do, we take it serious and others also take it serious and, and that we can have a plan to, to, to kind of um, have that project out um, you know, on time. And some notes here, you know, the roles that I will describe below, they're not mutually exclusive. You, you can have you could be an editor, you could be a reviewer, you could be helping to do some kind of advocacy, you could do, uh, you could be a researcher, you could be an engineer, you could be, you know, if you wear multiple hats, that's totally fine. Um, so they're pretty flexible, but at least I think the leads are very important because people that are leading projects, they, they kind of have to put more effort and focus on the particular projects they're, they're leading. Um, you know, you can go and, and, and try to lead on multiple projects or even be an individual contributor in another project, that's totally fine. Like I said, everything is flexible. But the leads are pretty important roles uh, when it comes to managing individual projects. Any questions so far? Elvis, when you say projects, you mean the the list of uh, uh, areas and then the corresponding sub areas, like science uh, communication. Uh, and yeah. Then, uh, okay. 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 Because yeah. it's not clear to me what project. <laughs> what exactly. project is? Yeah. 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 Okay. So let me talk about it. So as a, again, just going back. <clears throat> Our main vision here is to help in research, education, and technologies. Most of the thing that we have been doing is mostly centered around research and education. Paper discussions is more about research. Paper implementations will be about research. And then we have things like education, publishing notebooks, all these different projects that we have. Um, and technologies, I think, is something that we really need to start to put more effort on. Um, and there are different ways we can do this. So I'll talk about all the projects now. So the first one, of course, the area is one of the areas is research, right? Research is quite crucial here. A lot of you that come here, that you want to know like what's happening, what's kind of the latest trends. And there are ways to do this to keep up with the latest trends and also be able to get involved in some research project. So I have identified some projects here. And by the way, this is 
completely open. If you have some idea that you want to, you think it's worth putting here and you want to work on, let's, let's talk about it. That's the reason that I want to kind of have these kind of teams where we can discuss ideas. Uh, but these are the ones that we have been currently working on. So the first one is uh, paper implementations. We haven't done any paper implementations. Most of us have just been doing like paper summaries and these sort of things um, that are much quicker to do. I think paper implementations will require like a really huge team effort because this is something that's not so easy to do. It takes a lot of time as well. Um, but I've been trying it on my own as well and I kind of have an idea on how much time this would take if I work with someone else as well. And, and I know some of you have been working as well together to implement uh, some type of paper. So I've seen some effort already on that one. Uh, there's some exciting things that are coming for this one. Um, but yeah, so I think that this will be something really important for us going forward. And you know, if you are really interested in working on paper implementations, just put your name here. That's, we are gonna figure out how we're gonna work as a team and identify papers that are worth uh, implementing. Now with some objective that we wanna kind of learn something about it in the process. And also at the end of the day, share what you learn, share um, your implementations. And we're going to do some kind of video recording about it and just you know, have this well documented for people that you know, want to go through the process as well. Okay, so feel free to put your name here. If you, don't, if you think maybe, I don't know if I want to be a lead, just put your name here on team if you're just interested in paper implementation. That is totally fine. Or you can you know, just send me a direct message on Slack and you know, we will sort this out. Paper presentation. So this is again um, centered around research. So paper presentation is some of the. <clears throat> so we have a, a few things that we want to do here. So it's kind of related to paper implementations, but this one is more centered around the implementation, and this one is more centered around how you present it. I think presentation is something that's kind of undervalued, but when you go to a conference and you want to present something. It's really important. It's a very important skill, not just for research or researcher, but anywhere you go, it's really good to practice your presentation skills. And I actually shared a document here. Let me see if I can pop this up here. Can you can can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. So I prepared this this document that I use for my PhD uh, thesis defense. Um, I, I worked together with my advisor on this, and we tried to kind of create like a template that everyone can use. Um, and I thought like this is pretty okay because it has some of the important points when you want to present a paper, such as uh, you know do an introduction, do an overview, and I give you some kind of more guidance there and show you the, the sort of things that are important to mention in the different sections. What is the motivation of the work? A related work overview. What's kind of the format? All these different things. This, if you get into specifics, you will see that you know, everything is has a, a particular format. Um, there's a lot to learn here. Uh, objectives of the work, then go into methodology, talk about some framework that you have proposed. And I just show some examples here, by the way, that's not kind of real, but just an example. And conclusions, you know, what contributions to the fu and future work as well. And have some slides about experiments, do an experimental setup, experiment the results, but analysis, conclusion, future work, and this sort of thing. So let's say you have a paper that you have identified that you want to present to us in the community. Um, this is something that can help guide you if you want to write a paper summary, for instance, this can also guide you. It's just a template that you can use, modify, adjust to whoever you want. It. It's just there to be used as a resource, but you can change it however you want. And I have some references, examples on kind of the formatting that you would use officially to uh, when you want to present a sort of paper, okay? So hopefully that's useful. And I know some of you have already started doing, um, working on paper presentations, and I'm quite excited about that and see how that comes up. We're gonna do recordings. Um, I have people from the industry as well, pretty interested in, in contributing to the community as well, and these sort of things. So we're gonna have like meetups, internal presentations as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think there's a lot uh, to learn from this particular project. Again, lead and team, please put your name there if you really wanna work on this one and we will talk about it. So don't be shy, okay, like I said, um, we're gonna create a team and we're gonna talk to each other and we're gonna try to understand how we can move forward. Uh, paper discussions, what is paper discussion? So this week we had a paper discussion, let me just show you how this looks. <clears throat> so we did our like two already, so we did two paper reading discussions. It was a lot of fun, a lot of people joined from all over the world. <laughs> we had people from Colombia, India, all over the place. Uh, Singapore. It was quite fun, really fun conversation. Um, you know, just talking about 
a paper that we identified to be really interesting to, to talk about. So this one was about T5, which is a very interesting recent work. And we discussed things when we discussed the practicality of the research. Um, you know, all these notes that you see here, you know, you can see here that the, the individual contributors, people taking notes, asking questions, all sorts of things. I thought this was a really, really interesting way to discuss a paper. I did not expect this, that people are writing notes and asking questions. And you know, just very curious about the work. And so I thought it was a very interesting activity to have, and we're gonna have this very often. So we're gonna try to do this weekly. And this is where I really need help because um, obviously right now at the moment, I'm the one trying to moderate it, um, but you know, I'm stretching myself thin with all the projects and I really want someone to kind of step up and help me out with this. I know Manny, for instance, um, was helping me out um, with this past one that we did yesterday. Um, he did a really good job of trying to moderate things, and you know, he—I don't know if he explicitly tried to do it, but it, it really worked out really well. So yeah, a lot of lot of notes. Uh, you can have access to this. This is on our GitHub. Uh, I shared a link already there. A lot of questions. If you want to know the sort of questions people are asking, really, really interesting questions. You can see the discussions there, um, and yeah, a lot of resources as well, video links, all sorts of things. Really interesting. So any questions so far? Yeah, I actually have a, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so when you mentioned uh, paper implementations, so what kind of work we are looking at, like, like starting from scratch or just using some existing libraries and then building up from there? Yeah, it, it could go either way. We could identify a library if that helps the process. Uh, we, we don't want to like overburden ourselves as well. Um, we could do a very simple, just use a high level library and try to implement maybe even a portion of the paper. It doesn't have to be the entire paper as well. As I know some people do that, it's very helpful as well. Uh, maybe do something like, for instance, I implement a tension or something like that for, uh, or even implement an architecture for a particular NLP task, like machine translation or something like that. that that's pretty helpful. Um, so these are the sort of things that we are talking about here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a lot of you asked me a lot of questions about the emotion analysis research. This is one of the research projects that I'm re I really want to push. I think this kind of project, anyone can get involved, to be honest. And that's the reason why I'm really excited about this one. And I spoke to some of you already about this one, like individually. And I just want to slightly mention what this is about. Because some of you also came for this one here. So this is an actual research project that um, that, you know, th this actually is just a continuation of my PhD. So I finished my PhD last year, um, and I really wanted to continue with it because I think it makes sense. I mean, this is about trying to kind of teach AI systems and how to be, how to show empathy, for instance. Um, and, and the idea is not just to have a system learn how to show empathy, but we want to use it in different applications as well. So we want to use it for conversational AI systems, all sorts of systems. But we don't only want to do it for English, we want to do it for multiple languages as well. And how do we do that? So that's sort of the questions that I asked myself when I was doing this research. And my effort at the beginning was just, I spent a lot of time doing data collection, because at that time, like deep learning wasn't that popular. <laughs> we still use feature engineering a lot. Um, so I needed to collect a lot of data to, to, to kind of do this investigation. Uh, and I use social media data, for instance, I use Twitter. I also use Facebook to some extent. And we were trying different types of data sets. And we, the idea was to kind of create this like generalized or unified approach uh, to do emotion analysis. And that was my dissertation. Unfortunately, my dissertation is not available publicly because I kind of, uh, I was in Taiwan studying, so there were some kind of restrictions there. Uh, but if you want a copy of it, I can send you a copy of it. Um, just you know, send me a message on Slack and I'll, I'll provide you the PDF for it. Um, but yeah, and so there we have some published work uh, as well in one of those NLP conferences where you can read more details about the whole data collection process. Uh, but the idea is to create sort of like a benchmark uh, that we can use uh, for testing. You know, we have the language models of today, uh, test them on more, more, more complex tasks. So we have a lot of benchmarks that people are creating for multiple languages, also for even more complex benchmarks, something I was rooting for like three years now. And I'm really happy that the community is going that direction and we're creating more difficult benchmarks is these sort of systems like language models that we're creating, they're just kind of like, uh, they're doing so good. They're almost like, uh, I think beating human performance or something like that. 
But I think something like emotion analysis is not, it's not that easy, especially as we move to different languages and cultures, different things uh, you need to take into consideration. So I thought it was a really interesting cool project uh, maybe to start to work on. Um, collect data on different languages. So I have a spreadsheet that I want to sh share with you here just to give an idea on what I mean. Okay, so this one. Okay, so, and you know, I thank my, uh, my, my colleagues that I contributed this with. Um, I kind of sort of put together uh, this spreadsheet where we have uh, sort of tags that we use. These are what uh, are called noisy labels. And we use these tags to uh, basically um, like create actual targets for your, your documents or pieces of text. And so for instance, here we have um, for English, I have identified for instance for the um, category of joy because these are, you can see here that we have multiple uh, classes and these classes are just emotions. So we have trust, joy and so forth. So you can go down the list sadness and you will see down the list like those and identify some uh, words that are mostly uh, centered around joy right and once i've identified those words uh, what i do is um i use social media so i, I would use something like twitter and i would you know, search for hashtag cool and if you go to twitter and you actually type hashtag cool you will see that pieces of text actually uh, most pieces of text you will see related to this hashtag are kind of you know, showing some aspect of cool or this particular uh, word. Well, this, this reminds me about Inside Out movie where there are like different <laughs> yeah. this core emotions and then yeah. from the core emotions you actually like identify the target keywords that are associated yeah. with those core emotions yeah. which can be replicated for other languages as well. Yes. But that's where I probably would start. Like that's what it actually like you know, it suddenly inside out actually came up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a movie for, for people who are not actually, it's a movie, Disney movie yeah. uh, that came out on 2015, specifically yeah. about a teenager talking, you know, about uh, learning about other emotions. Yeah. 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 This is very cool. Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So the, actually the inside out, um, you know, uh, our advisor kind of told us, this is, if you're really interested in this research, you need to watch this movie. So a lot of the stuff that you're seeing here is, you know, actually <laughs> inspired by this movie so that's a good nice yeah. nice yeah so we have different languages so actually i had some colleagues that were helping me do a spanish translation and it's a difficult task to translate uh, the words because there are some words you won't find direct translation and that's totally fine why for this type of research you will notice we have so many different tags that we can go on and just keep listing right keep listing everyone their own culture use different words and uh, and so uh, to express emotions so we can just create this huge list and at the end of the day when you're collecting all this massive data set you will realize that you know even if you have five tags you still are able to collect a lot of data for those particular uh, set of emotions so this is the idea of it right and we have the spanish here like for instance here we have cool what honestly i don't know even though i know spanish i don't know what the word means but it's kind of related i think so fabulous, fabuloso, and you can see we have Albanian as well, Indonesian, and we have Malaysian as well here. So we're going to use these sort of words and use them as kind of like our root seeds to be able to collect data about these ones. I think someone is, let me just mute. It's creating too much noise here. Yeah, so that's the idea. Uh, you can take a look at this. Um, I have some references. Let me just go back here. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but uh, if you go back into this sheet here, I have some references that you can take a look at uh, that would give you a better idea on, on uh, I think, did I share the paper? I think I, I, need, I need to put a, like, share the paper here. So I have a paper that I published about talking more about this, this whole data collection process and how we did it. And we actually tried to attempt to work with different languages such as Japanese and other languages, more complex languages. Um, yeah, so I hope this is, could be something interesting we can work on. And this is cool because again, it's going to be a fun project. You can see that it could be a fun project. We can learn a lot. You can actually learn how to collect data from scratch because that's something that I think um, a lot of our community take for granted. Like collecting data is such a hard task, but it's such a valuable thing to learn because when you go into the industry and you start to practice stuff, you you will need to collect data from scratch. <laughs> There's no question about it. So, the whole process is really worthwhile. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so there are other like research efforts that already that we have started to discuss with some, some people. Um, I know some people want to do more like related to privacy. So I had a conversation uh, with a gentleman who wants to do um, some test around uh, with privacy tools um, around NLP. So that's something that we also going to talk about. Again, this is very open. If you think this is something worthwhile for us to pursue, um, you know, just, just propose it and let's see what we can do and we can help each other with any of the ideas. Okay. Okay, I see some of you already put in your names. Thank you for that. Just go ahead, put your name there or send me a direct message. That's totally fine. Anyway, it's, it works, okay? All right, so that's for the research part. Any, any questions on that? You can also put them um, on the, on, 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 yeah, you can put them in the chat as well. But I, I suggest you put them maybe in, in this document if you have edit uh, permissions. All right, let's move on. So science communication, what is this about? Well, most of our efforts that we have been working on recently is centered around science communication. So I'm a true believer of science communication um, when I published my paper, the first thing that I wanted to do is to do a paper summary about it. And that's the first thing I did. I thought that was so meaningful because I got so many people interested in this field. And you know, you have you 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 can contribute in so many different ways, but just communicating about the specific work and communicating in a way that people understand something that is approachable to people, and you know, maybe someone understands it and translate it to different languages. And so you kind of expand your reach and expand the impact of your work in this way. So that's something I, I like to encourage a lot, and, and I do a lot of that as well on my on my own. The publication of article. So I think let me just let me just share here. Uh, so we have a like a publication. It's on Medium, but we also have it on our page here. We can see if you go to blogs. But there's just a ton of stuff here. I mean, this is this is so much fun to be to be doing this. To be honest, I, I spend a lot of time. This is kind of my hobby. I spend a lot of time doing this stuff, and I really really enjoy it, the interactions and. I learned so much by just reviewing a publication before, uh, reviewing an article before it's being published. I learned so much. This is, this is a really cool learning experience for me. So you can see here we have uh, recently, so if you go back, you can see at some point, it was only me, right? It was only me publishing stuff. And then uh, people got interested in it, they wanted to contribute. And we have like this really cool article. So Rishad, for instance, um, publishes one very successful, I think. Um, he tried to introduce this concept of GNNs and he did it in such a really amazing way. Like the, the language he was using here, like I, even myself, I learned a lot. I didn't know much about DNNs. And he's just like going through the details, doing some visualizations, just going through that rigorous process of trying to make things so approachable. And this is a really fun article. This is the sort of things that, you know, I wake up every day and say, I want to continue doing this. I think this is really meaningful work. So I really appreciate this sort of efforts. And, and, and this is the sort of things that uh, we want to do. Okay, and then Victor, of course, Victor recently has started to do a lot. We have Tony here as well. Yeah, Tony, um, he's you know contributing also to paper summaries as well. So he did a really cool uh, paper on a different type of work, by the way, citation intent classification, which I thought super interesting. So there's a lot to learn there as well. And you know, Victor is mostly doing things related to um, modern NLP methods, language models. So he has things like Langform or Electra. And at some point, we're going to combine all of these things and create sort of recipes for people to um, just introduce them to the, to the topic. So there's a lot of things centered around these efforts of doing the paper summaries. Uh, we have Constance as well doing some, some effort also to introduce some of the um, earlier concepts. And you know when transfer learning kind of started to blow up attention, also she has a new one as well on this one. And even works related to some interpretability, explainability stuff. So we're kind of mixing it up, right? And notice that most of the things that we're publishing here are centered around NLP. Um, for some reason, a lot of you are interested in NLP, uh, but it's not, it, it, the thing I want to say is that it's not just uh, about NLP. If you have some kind of uh, like machine learning thing that you want to talk about, that's to I'm totally open to that. And actually we had some, I think we had one, yeah, we had this, this, this publication here. Uh, was about unsupervised progressive learning. I learned a lot from this one. I think this is really cool uh, paper summary. So it's not just about NLP. It could be about multiple things. Okay. So that's the publication of articles. The process like this: you submit a draft. If you have a Medium account, you can also post it here directly. So what we try to do is publish it here and then publish it as well here. And then if it's a paper summary, what we do is we also make reference to it on 
on this repository. So if you look at this repository, um, so I'm working with Tony and, and, and another student also helping me out to maintain this repository. And if you look at it, we have like all the different uh, categories. And let's see if we can go into one of these ones. And you see some of the summaries that we have been working on and also summaries from other organizations as well. But I want to make sure that things are going here are things that are reliable and you know, approachable also. Just want to make sure we want to um, have that barrier lower as much as we can. Okay, any, any questions? Uh, what is expected when, when someone is actually wants to publish an article, what is expected from the, uh, the team who are actually contributing? Yeah, so the, 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 the person, so this one is, it, it, so each one of them, you'll notice that it's kind of different, the expectations are different. Uh, so for this one, it's like, it's, you're just basically gonna be a writer, so you're gonna be an individual contributor that you write something and you wanna submit it as a draft. Right, so the expectation here is to just have a quick, you know, rough draft and share with us. And we're going to have a team you know, of us, like editors and reviewers, helping you out through the whole process, uh, giving you tips on how you can improve it, for instance. So we definitely want to identify a team to kind of um, help with the review process. So I'm going to get to that, by the way, because we, we do have like a section where we discuss the roles. So there are actually roles, specific roles. And one of those roles is actually reviewer and editor. So you're going to have people that you can reach out to directly um, to, to, to kind of commence the, the process. Say, oh, I have this idea and I, I, do you think it makes sense? And, you know, set up a draft and then you know, get back to them and they will do the review process. So that's kind of uh, how we want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right. So that's the publication of articles. Very successful stuff. I think this is really helpful. I do a lot of that. I think it's totally valuable, totally, totally worth your time because uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, effort to communicate things using a layman language that anyone can understand. It, it is really an art, I think, and, and you learn a lot from the process. Um, technical tutorials are more like, uh, I really want to encourage this one because let me see if I can show you some examples of what I did before. I think these are the most successful um, things that I've published um, throughout this whole journey of doing things for, uh, for data API. So if you go to developers, I set up a couple of tutorials. I don't know, maybe some of you have seen some of these. So, I tried to do like diversify myself. I do things like medical image analysis, for instance, and I set up some kind of tutorial. I do like a neural network from scratch, for instance, uh, building our learning from, from, you know, with, with Python or something like that. Um, I even did like a partner for learning Google Collab when it was just starting to get popular. And uh, these are things that are really useful for the community, especially for people that are starting because, you know, for instance, if I show you an example here, it's not just a tutorial, a uh, Python notebook, although that's included. Um, it's also an article, right? You kind of motivate what this is about and you give them a story and you kind of go through the whole process and then you start to tell them, okay, you know, you need to kind of the first thing is to import libraries. And then you go through the whole thing, like explaining every detail of the way, like what's going on, what is this, what is in import and these sort of things. So someone that comes here, they, they get a lot of knowledge from this and they can go and expand to whatever they want. So I think these are really, really helpful as well. And these have been really successful um, unfortunately, they take a lot of time. <laughs> That's the only thing. But I think if we work as a team, it's totally doable. And we can do a lot of really cool um, technical tutorials like this. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in that, we have a couple of people also working on some, some projects in this related to this. So someone, I think it's the same individual that did the uh, intro to GNN. He wants to do an introduction to GNN, but do more like interactive kind of introduction. So introduce code and these sort of things. And we have some a, a team of people also working on a machine translation one um, to work on a specific language and want to see if we can generalize it to different languages as well. So a lot of efforts there on that one. So let me know if you're interested in that. So we have an NLP newsletter. Uh, so far up to this point, so the NLP newsletter, I think, I think a lot of you that know about this community is because of the NLP newsletter. So I started the NLP newsletter while I was doing my PhD. This was like four years ago. I remember after the second year of starting this, I just kind of gave it up. I gave it up because it was so time consuming. Um, you know, it was just it was just so stressful to be doing a newsletter every single week. Um, but I think I picked it up back this year again, and I started to work on it. And I had like like academics reach out to me, well known academics, but <laughs> reach out to me to tell me, hey, we really love your newsletter. I think we should continue because it's so useful for the community, uh, giving people updates on what's the emerging trends in, in ML and NLP. 
And it, that's all I needed. I just needed sort of like a little encouragement to keep working on it. And so I started again this year, and I think it's in the 11th issue now. And this is this this newsletter here is pretty successful. I, I to my standards, I think it's really helpful for people. Um, I get every day I get people sending me messages. This is so useful. Um, keep doing this, and a lot of encouragement. It really really takes a lot of time to do a newsletter issue. It's something that I you know I, I take really great pride to do because I try to um, put in everything that I know. Like I want to make sure that things are accurate as accurate as possible. I want to make sure that when people go into the newsletter that everyone takes away something right i could talk about you know topics in a way that you won't understand a very high level and you won't understand a very abstract level but i can also talk about topics in a very detailed level as well and for you to understand um, but the whole idea is to make this as approachable as possible and helpful for people um, it's just sort of a way as well to tell people about what we're doing about our efforts so recently with the later newsletters that i've been posting uh, let me just show you what I'm doing with this one. So the idea is to just use this as a way to communicate about all our efforts. I think this is a really good channel because there's so many people reading this stuff. Um, let me just show you. So it's created this segment where we have like the AI updates. And you know, we, we were posting things that, for instance, I hear I posted about our first discussion on the DeFi paper. So we're trying to kind of expose this, this, this sort of efforts using the end opinions that are so I'm definitely not giving up on this one, but since I don't want to give up on it, and I know it takes a lot of work, I really want help with this one. I think maybe putting a team together to just uh, identify things that are you know, worth reporting about, and also just you know, using proper language. You will learn a lot from this process. It's a very rigorous process, uh, because I want to make sure that you know, I create a newsletter that's helpful and accurate and approachable, and so all these things, um, uh, yeah, they're very important. Elvis, I have <laughs> the same imposter syndrome actually creeping in. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, yeah. I, I, so if I add myself as a team, like, uh, you know, I have only like, I do not have a PhD, right? So, no, uh, yeah. how can I be like, so in that case, you know, having someone like you to actually review it would be really super helpful. So, yeah. but I can able to actually like able to find things that are really, really interesting yeah. and worth reporting, yeah. which mm -hmm. could be uh, a candidate, right? So, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so the whole idea right now, um, I'm just, I just have it open. I'm doing it on my own, but I kind of, kind of set up uh, like a, like a process and how this would work. So basically what I did is just create like templates and I use same Dropbox here where I just create sections. And then I, I kind of identify things that um, could be meaningful. So one thing that I want to do is I, I really want to work on this newsletter. I just don't want to make it something that, you know, where you have just resources that are being shared. I want to identify actual trends, right? And trends are things that we're working on in different projects. And that's why this makes a lot of sense for me. But there are so many different trends that are happening. So privacy, for instance, is a trend. Um, chatbots, conversational AI systems are a trend as well. So identify those trends. And once we have identified the strengths, what we do is we search. We go to papers, we go to archives. That's kind of the process that I go through here. And once I've identified that, then I try to read a little bit about the paper, try to get an idea of what the paper is proposing and how this is helpful for maybe practitioners and also researchers. So that's kind of my thought process here. Um, I don't mind sharing all of that, to be honest. Like, I really want help with this. I so, probably would put myself in, but I okay. I want to actually understand your thought process <laughs> yeah. based on which then probably I I can contribute something meaningfully rather than yeah. being an additional like blocker to this uh, pro, uh, project. Yeah. So totally fine, totally fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. so totally. Fine. Yeah, so don't 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 be afraid. Like I mean, th this whole thing is is just again for some of you maybe it will be a beginning, but that's totally fine. Yeah, you know, try to try to. Um, ask questions as much as possible and, and what, what, what it means to certain things and yeah, we'll help each other out. It doesn't matter. Like people like to say, right, you don't really need a PhD for this, you don't really need a PhD for this. Just just believe that and that's the case um, for most of things. Um, okay. All right, so NLP highlights. Uh, okay, this one is, uh, okay, this one I did. Um, so to be honest, this one did take a lot more work than the newsletter, but I thought this was such a cool idea. And for this one, I actually ask other experts to help me review it because I thought it, this could be something huge. So what I did was, let me just show you what was the result of this. Uh, this was something that I worked on for like three months. Uh, it really took a lot of time to do because I tried to work on this on, on the weekends. 
And basically what I did was identify. So I use a newsletter as a resource, but I also use like my paper reading that I do personally. Um, and I try to identify like high level topics that are very important in, in, like, in the field of NLP. So I do, do this uh, NLP research highlights. And so here you have the identified topics and I go through each one of those. So for instance, like symbolic reasoning, uh, theoretical understanding of self distillation these are topics that are just coming up. And, and I just go into detail into each one of them. And the whole idea was to give like a really nice summary of each one of the works and just have a conversation around it. Not just the, the details of the work, but what kind of is, not my opinion, but what, where I think this is headed and why it's useful and these sort of things. And I think this was really cool. It was a really cool work, but again, this is something that I plan maybe to do like on a quarterly basis. So maybe do this like in the next two months or three months, do another one of this. And if you are working in the newsletter, you will have an idea of what this is. And if you are doing paper summaries, you will have an idea of what this is because it's all connected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the idea. And this is huge. This is huge because it's, it's, it's we're not going to publish it every single, every single day or every single week, but this is something we're going to post quarterly just to give people an idea of what's going on. And also at the end, uh, of the year, I have this thing where I published like, um, uh, let me see if I can show you an example. So let's see, and the highlights. So I've done this for two years consecutively. And you know, this one is, this stuff is really viral for some reason. Like I just try to do like highlights on, on, on things that I identify throughout the year. Um, also takes roughly about a month to put together, but I just go through a lot of things, things that I didn't like, you know, themes that identify education, ethics in AI, that was huge in 2019, tools and data set, creativity and society. So I try to identify and I go through a ton of resources. I try to summarize things, put them in order, these sort of things. But these things are really successful efforts. I think I want to do more of those as well. I don't want to give up on the whole concept of doing the NLP highlights. So for 2020, all this stuff that we're doing for the newsletter, NLP highlights, will be included as part of the year. So again, another way to showcase the work that they're doing. So that's very important as well, okay? I wanted to mention that. Okay, uh, let's see. So for education, so some of the things here will be repeated, but I just want to kind of highlight quickly here because um, the time is kind of already, I'm above the hour. Is it okay if I continue? Fine with it, okay? For sure. Yeah? Okay, perfect. Um, just ask, interrupt me, ask me questions, please. Um, I'm trying to give you as much of this as possible so that, you know, when we end this call, uh, you can reach out to me and you let me know, hey, Elvis, I, I, I think, I believe in this one. I want to work, I want to help you out in this one, and I want to be part of this team. So that's kind of the, the aim of the, the, the meeting here. But education, so what is about education? So a, a lot of overlap with the previous ones as well, but NLP overviews, let me just give you an idea of what this is. I share a link here. Uh, the NLP overview, so I work with the researcher, so he published this paper, um, like three years ago, I think, and I worked with this researcher and I kind of created a website. Um, I've been thinking every single day about this website because it took a long time to, to, to get together. And the whole idea was to give people that are coming into our field an idea of what are some of the modern deep learning um, techniques, right? Um, and so here we have a table of contents. We have all the different techniques such as the CNNs, the distributed representations so of from word embeddings up to, you know, to, to, to language models, right? The, the, the downloading of that language models, you know, what kind of approaches we're using. So all this stuff is in here. But, you know, if you go here and you read it, it's a good summary of what's going on. But if you read it, there's no, uh, what else is there? There's no way to like, what's the next step? So I was thinking about doing like some notebooks, even embedding some notebooks here about maybe how to train a simple language model, like an engram language model, these are sort of things that are easy to prepare, by the way. Like if you if you if you're interested in that, I have a lot of code for that. I've been doing some of this work as well. And I just have like videos here, make it more interactive. Like the idea of the watch, like the code walkthroughs, have some code walkthrough here and make this a resource that people can enjoy as well. Not just reading and knowing about some concept at a high level or abstract level, but giving them something that you know, they can use to, to actually practice as well. It's not just theory, but practical approach as well. But I think this is a really cool project. I, I, I kind of like think about it every day, how I can improve it, how I can improve this one. So I'm thinking about this one a lot. And I think putting a team together to kind of improve this resource would be really cool. Uh, quick question. Uh, this Keeping it up to date is really hard, Elvis. How are you doing this with <laughs> NLP overview? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. things are really like moving really fast. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, 
Yep. Okay. Um, so the approach we took with the researcher that I, that, that I work on the, with this project is um, we try to you know give it some time, give it some time, give it a couple of months, uh, sometimes even a year to identify things that are really really breakthroughs. Because at the moment you may think everything is a breakthrough, but if you know you you spend a year, you will notice that some things kind of die off. Uh, they're not so helpful. Maybe at the time they were, and everyone was so like excited about it. But then at some point they were like, okay, you know, maybe maybe not so important uh, and, and and relevant up to today. So so we just want to identify like major breakthroughs and report them here, right? So that's that's kind of our approach. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So LP fundamentals. Okay. So this is another one as well. So many projects, right? And again. All this stuff I've been doing on my own, I really want help with this one because I'm excited about every project that you see here. But, uh, and you know, community has been really interested in all these efforts. And I just want to make sure that these projects don't die off because, um, you know, uh, like I think putting a team together around it will be uh, pretty meaningful. So, a lot of you shared interest to do NLP fundamentals. What is this about? Let me just share a little bit about what it is. So, idea was um, I got a lot of requests to write a book. I don't want to write a book because if I write a book, it becomes outdated pretty quickly. And that's something that I, I say, okay, instead of spending time doing writing a book, write, why don't I just write notebooks, you know, update them online, even have a, like a website like I showed you before, and have these things like regularly update them and maintain them. And then my hope is that we can have a team around this um, where we can just continually do this, right? And, and we can work together on what makes sense to update, what makes sense to include, what makes sense not to include, these sort of things. We can work together with that. And you can learn about that thought process. Um, so if you look at the first one, what we did is uh, we talk about the fundamentals. So the whole idea of the project is to start from scratch. How do you start from scratch? Well, you're not going to start with a language model. If you're NLP, you're going to start from the basics, you know, processing a textual data. How do you do that? So you know, start with tokenization. What's the whole idea? Of, what's lemmatization? Very important concept. Stemming. All these different fundamental concepts that are very important. And how do you use this in machine learning? Give a really nice conversation about it. So there's the theory and there's the practical aspect of it. And of course, there's also the coding part, which is super useful. And I know one of you mentioned that, you know, you should do a code watch. Of course, I've been thinking about that, but again, it takes a little bit of effort to put that together. So I think this is one of the most exciting projects that I've worked on so far. And, you know, you could imagine that it really took a lot, a lot of time to put together because I had to go through some courses, some books as well. And I tried to identify what are the things in what order I want to um, write this series on. So this is just the first part of the series. And the second part I've been working on, it's almost finalized. I don't know if I have it here, but yeah, we'll put that information here. I kind of forgot. Let me just make a note of that. So I have the second chapter. Okay, here. I'll make a note to myself. I have the second chapter almost ready. You just need to be reviewed, like the, the text, the, the grammar, I think, and some code bits as well. And I know some of you expressed interest. I think Tony was mentioning that he wanted to work on this one. And I tried to come up with some kind of um, some kind of guide on how you can contribute to this. So that's the stuff I put together as well. Okay. So all of these things will be connected. I think that at, at some point, like the NFP fundamentals could become like the, the 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 other project I showed you before, which is where we had the um, the mother techniques at some point we can out do that merging as well. So uh, that stuff, you know, we're going to talk about that. It's so, so, so exciting um, to see where all of these things are headed. MLP paper summary. So we have discussed this already. What is it about? I showed you the notebook. I showed you um, ways you can contribute towards this. Uh, write paper summaries. Um, I have identified a couple of, I should have included that issue here. So if you go into one of our repositories, I think it's this one. Uh, this is our main repository. If you go to issues, so we have, I think it's this one. Let me just add a link. So every every week or so, um, I would identify uh, some some papers that I thought would are worthwhile doing summaries of. So I just identified him. But again, very open. You can you know write your own, and we see a lot of people trying to already working on these. So you know if you want to do a paper summary, you want to know the process, you don't know how how to do it. That's why we're going to build these teams to help you with the whole process. Okay, let me just put note that. Yeah, so that's the idea. And you can see here, go to that link and get an idea. I kind of explain what it is. 
um, topics that we identify papers every week we kind of select papers and you, you stay up to date with things so that's pretty helpful all right so PyTorch TensorFlow notebooks um, this is just notebooks in general we kind of discussed it already but let me just let's see if I can find that here so one thing I did before was um, I did a lot of like PyTorch notebooks so all the notebooks there's so many notebooks but I tried to kind of clean them up and, and, and fix them up and then kind of have this set of notebooks that identify and, you know, and, and just share with people. So I have this huge list of, and, and there's so many more to come here. So anything that is a PyTorch notebook, anything that is a TensorFlow notebook um, can go in any of these repositories. So they can be shared in newsletter, they can be shared here. So people are following this stuff and they, they wanna know more of this. So that, those are ways you can contribute as well. So let me see if I got down here. So I have TensorFlow notebooks. I haven't worked so, so much on this one. Oh, yeah, this one is empty. I should have, yeah, this one. Yeah, so I have like, you know, how do you do RNN, the fundamentals as well, um, you know, CBAL, and intro to TensorFlow as well. So all these notebooks, I have it here, but I, two years ago, I haven't really spent the time to put it together like I did with the Python notebooks, because I'm using more Python than TensorFlow nowadays. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, if you're in TensorFlow, I think that's a good project that you can help us improve. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so a question here. So let's see. We have, uh, can it be an old paper? I, I definitely think it could be an old paper. I, I Someone asked me that question before. I really made a comment of it. Um, I would love to have, like, that, I'm a true believer of that. Like, this there's certain knowledge that you know they last for so long like we, we we can definitely write something about so for instance i think we had someone asked me that question before and they said they wanted to do some kind of like philosophical paper um in computational linguistics i thought it was brilliant like let's do that let's let's, let's work on that i think that could be super interesting to work on and you know that could have some implications in, in our fields like privacy and ethics and this sort of thing so yeah i want to have the discussion i think it could be super useful for um, our community so yeah definitely okay so technology now this is where we're kind of lacking we're not doing much around technology we're doing a lot of about research we're doing a lot about um we're doing a lot about education but technology is one of the pillars that i think is really valuable here and i've been thinking about how we can you know, help towards technology uh, when it comes to uh, different ai technologies so I've been thinking really, really hard about uh, some kind of library that we can use to better educate people. So I know we have libraries like Facet AI that make it super easy for grabbing a model and just implementing things pretty, pretty easily. And I remember I using it in my research. I use it, it's pretty easy to use by the way. Um, but that's not the idea. The idea is to create something a bit more simplified um, to provide sort of like a you know, library that offers you some kind of guidance in, along the process. So create something really simple that people can use and you know this could be different forms it doesn't have to be like a full-fledged library it could just be a library that gives you some like more commands or something like that it could be in any way so this is just an idea that i'm throwing out there uh, but i'll be happy to to discuss with you um, how we can kind of work towards any any, any sort of technologies um, implementing libraries uh, maybe even <clears throat> um, so implementing a library for an upcoming course and that's where i want to um, end the discussion on projects so recently I made an announcement that I want to do an NLP course, similar to what I was trying to do with the, I think with the, with the, I think it was, it was a project about, there's so many projects, hard to keep up, uh, with this one, NLP fundamentals. So I'm going to use this content, by the way, so that walkthrough that you know, someone was requesting, that's going to happen, because this is actually going to be part of this project. Um, but the idea is to create a course um, that's you know, remotely, it's for free, anyone can participate in it. Um, we will have recordings as well um, and just deliver it online. So I'm going to have some schedule that's going to come up later. I'm trying to work out the details. Um, I'm trying to, some people will have shown interest also to kind of sponsor this whole project. Um, and so I'm trying to work out the details here. So still, I don't have the final details spread. Uh, but I would really you know, want to like, create a team around this where we have things like teaching assistants. Uh, you could be a teaching assistant. You can help also to just debug, you know, the, check code for instance these are sort of things that you can help on as well um researcher i'm not sure what i meant by researcher here yeah you can ignore that 
but yeah, you can help in many different ways. You can help also creating the notebooks and all the material as well. So that's kind of related to the previous projects. So you can see all these projects, they have some kind of connection. Um, I think that's the best approach here because we don't want to like rebuild content all, over, all, all the time. So we want to make sure we can reuse stuff. So any questions on that one? Yeah, one question actually. So yeah. in this, yeah. So in this NLP course, like, uh, what kind of things are you expecting to cover? Are we going to start with the basics, which you started earlier, or are we going to focus on like more recent advances in this field? So, so it's gonna it's gonna be a course. My idea of it is gonna be a course starting from the fundamentals, teaching you what are the most important things that people are still currently using in the industry what practitioners are using. We don't have to cover everything that's in fundamentals, but fundamentals is gonna be a huge part of it. And then moving into something like um, uh, more modern methods, or what are the modern methods that are being used, and what are the challenges of using those methods? And eventually also having a segment where you have how to use this um, for applications, building applications, real world applications, search engines, all these sort of things that are really cool that you can do with this. Yeah? yeah? So it and will be more like uh, pra practical aspects, right? No, it will be it will be theory. It will be practical as well. It's a combination of the two. It doesn't have to be exclusively one. It will be a combination okay. of two. So I'm trying to make sure that this course has that practicality aspect of it, because I think this yeah. is where it could be, you know, really useful. Yeah. 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 So that's the idea. That's the kind of the brief idea of it. Um, still working out the details because I want to make sure that when I announce it, um, you can sign up for it as well. You can sign up as a student. Um, so other information will can be coming up soon, uh, but I want to make sure that you know if anyone wants or is willing to contribute to this particular course, um, working on notebooks, like uh, putting together notes, for instance, for students. Um, I guess I don't know if we're going to have grading. Still haven't sorted that out yet, but um, TAs will be really important here because if we plan to do this really massively global um, online, we're going to need a lot of TAs, and I'm very aware of that. So. If you're yeah. interested in that, please put, please make sure you let me know and we'll work it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take away five more minutes and then we're going to call it a day. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about roles, right? So here we don't have to put anything. This is going to be more official later on. But as we start to identify teams and we start to talk about how we can move forward to different projects and even new projects, if you have any ideas, um, we will have roles, right? So we're going to have roles, like for instance, the leads. So we have leads. What is a lead? You know, it's just a person, like I said, it's going to be in charge and take ownership of a particular project. So for instance, if you're going to you know, own, uh, for instance, the some of the notebook efforts, uh, you're going to make sure that you, know, you have some kind of schedule and not to make it too strict, but also at the same time, just to help help each one of us accountable for everything that we're doing so that we make sure that we're not wasting our time um, in all the efforts that we're doing, because we're spending a lot of our, you know, time here. So I want to make sure of that. Um, very, very huge responsibility, I believe. <clears throat> and then researchers, these are more like the individual contributors, which I identified. Obviously, this list can grow, but some of the things that I've identified really important, at, or some of the roles that are important at the moment are things like researchers, right? Doing research. Um, research could be, you know, reading through a book, I really through a paper and identifying something that could be useful or something like that. It doesn't have to be someone that's implementing or trying to write a paper or something like that. This is a very open kind of role. Um, but yeah, this is how it will look. So I will provide, again, I put the note here, all of these things are tentative. I'll make all of this official on the website, but also I wanna make sure that uh, I work together with the leads that I've identified to make sure that uh, we can, it's actually one of the roles of the lead, is to identify what are the responsibilities, right? What is the responsibility going to be? So for instance, if you're a researcher, you, you know, you may be working on different projects. You, you may be working on an NLP highlights, you may be working on the NLP newsletter. So you have different responsibilities and responsibilities would be different, but at least try to identify some general responsibilities that would work. Engineers as well, very, very open, right? Could be web development, um, I do need a lot of help with the website. The website is, it's, it's there, it's static. It doesn't have any, a lot of fun. It's not organized. Um, you know, I kind of feel guilty about it because I'm a web developer myself, but it's just too much stuff going on. And then don't spend too much time trying to you know, make it beautiful and make it more interactive and more informative. 
So definitely need help with that one. Okay. So and then reviewers, reviewers for people that are helping, you know, the, hey, we need a reviewer. We need two reviewers here. But so much st stuff that people are publishing. I can't keep up. I just can't keep up on my own. So we need a lot of people to help us with reviewers. The more we have, the better. And we kind of identify the reviewers. Anyone can review, but if you have identified reviewers, that would be really wonderful because then we have people that we can reach out to and we can do the review process, reviewing notebooks, reviewing um, anything, reviewing and even the newsletter you can review for grammar, the sort of things. Um, yeah, so that's a very also critical role here. Um, editors, again, um, I really want to identify some editors because one of the things is that when someone submits a draft or is trying to publish something is in the final phases of publishing something, or even in the beginning phases where you have identified the topic that you want to report on, um, this is the kind of person that you will interact with. This person will be in charge of uh, making sure that the whole, you know, the whole experience of publishing something is really quite smooth, right? So that's kind of the responsibility here. Try to publish on the website, try to publish on Medium, try to publish on any other sort of social media website, any, anywhere, right? So trying to make sure that we have like high quality and very accurate publications. Because I, I don't really care about speed, to be honest. Like from the beginning days when I started to write stuff, I took care less about speed. I want to make sure that the stuff is really accurate. And we're going to spend time doing a lot of editing and proofreading to make sure that we have that high quality that we, that we want. I think if we do this as a team, then we don't care. We don't have to worry about speed. Speed is just going to come as a consequence. But we just really need to have a team to help us with this one. So I'd appreciate any efforts here to help us um, lead the publication efforts. OK, so web developer. Um, this one is just really, again related to the top one. Like if you can do some kind of web development, you are good at graphic design, for instance, as well. We really need help with that. We're doing a lot of um, like meetups now. We're going to do a lot of meetups, and we need people helping us with graphic designing. Uh, trying to put together some of the banners as well that we're using. Um, other stuff currently is being done by me. I try to do this stuff. Like I really want to make it more professional. And, you know, make it look um, be much better. And here I have a word branding. I don't really like to use the word branding too much, especially when I talk about a community, but it's kind of important and we have to accept that it is. Um, wanna make sure that when we post something that it looks professional and has that appeal to it so that people get interested in it. So um, a lot to learn there and then I think we need help a lot also on that one. Um, technical advocate, I think this is a really cool one. Um, so far I've been trying to think of, you know, having people identify people, it could be people that are also in other roles, it could be leads, individual contributors as well. Uh, identify people that are really good at um, understanding concepts really easily. Like, uh, you know about this, you know about that, you talk about a lot of things and, and you know what you're talking about. Like, uh, you know, even if it's just at a high level, it doesn't really matter. Someone that really is about learning about the technologies and knows a lot about the technologies and is constantly keeping up to date, that's, I think, what I identify as a technical advocate, at least for our community. Um, you know, at least for our efforts, like have people help us with um, communicating about our projects. What are our projects about and what we, what's the idea behind it? You know, you don't really need to go into too much details. And when we have some kind of release as well, um, for any of our projects uh, that you know how to talk about this release, you know how to communicate about it. So we really need a lot of efforts on that because at the moment we're not doing, we're not doing any of that. Like every time we have a publication, we post it and that's about it. But we're not doing any advocating for it because we don't have someone to help us with that. So I would really, really appreciate if people can help me with this effort because I think we really need um, help on that. Uh, and then these, this, uh, so public relations manager. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a few people that are helping me with this already, but you know, the more the better here um, to help us with public relations. This is actually a very, very important also role because one thing that I really, really uh, take seriously is the way I communicate with, with this community, with the machine learning community. Machine learning community, um, it's a very, very tough community. I've been saying this for so many years. Um, and the, the more the years pass, the tougher it is, right? So you don't, that's why we have all this kind of imposter syndrome all over the place because, um, you know, you are afraid of saying something that's maybe out of, uh, out of context or something that doesn't make that much sense or something like that. Um, but the, the good thing is that we have a community where we can ask that question and we can say, hey, do you think this sounds okay? Do you think that you know, we can learn from each other? I think. Um, this sort of role is very important. I've done this in the past myself, even though I'm a researcher, more technical person, but I've tried it. I think it's a really cool role to be able to communicate with people and 
and just connect with people at a certain level. So it, it makes a lot of sense, I think. And then we can have someone that's helping us with the um, campaign. So we have some campaign, maybe where we are announcing the course, for instance, um, you know, help us with the campaign and, and work together with the other teams to help us on that. Uh, what about uh, Elvis? Uh, I have a question. So, what about connecting with other communities? So, there are like I, I know that like there are fast AI community which specifically uh, it's it revolves around the library, but it's more than that as well. Uh, and there are like specific people who actually work on NLP area. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I I can totally see that today I actually like connected one of the first people who just started with venturing. He's an expert in uh, in BERT, but uh, he just started with venturing out around, okay, how can I apply yeah. machine translation? Yeah. Um, okay. Is that I, I really, yes, I really like that one. That's the one that I was thinking about when I tried to prepare this, because one of the things that, the questions that really pop up to me is, wait, so we're contributing, we're helping our communities, we're, we're kind of working together as a group, learning from each other, but what are we doing for other communities? What are we doing? What efforts are we doing? Um, do we want to maybe contribute, like say a, a talk or something like that, or something? You know, this is really open. To be honest, like this is the reason why I'm excited about it because it's so transparent and open. Like people from other communities can come to. It doesn't matter. It could go both ways as well. It really doesn't matter. And I want to encourage that as well. So that's kind of really important why I want to have these sort of roles because you know you have the idea, you have the mindset of what you want to do, like help out other communities as well, and just build. You know, just build communities, healthy communities that help with each other and, and feed off each other as well. So yeah, definitely. That's a huge, that's a huge idea. And so events organizer, community lead. So this is more about a little bit like PR, but it's more centered around organizing events. So we have our meetups. So how do we manage that meetup page? Really need help with that because obviously I do that as well. Um, just we have like weekly, for instance, paper reading sessions, how that work, you know, maybe someone can help us on that as well, how to organize events and work closely with the technical applicants as well and the PR manager. So these are roles that I've identified. Maybe at some point we don't even have a community like lead or events organizer, but maybe someone just want to individually contribute to this so we don't have like a specific role. Uh, but these are just ideas, right? So we're going to talk about it some more later on. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I yeah. have a generic question actually. Yeah. Yeah, so like all this seems a lot of effort, especially when you are managing your full-time job. Yeah. So do you have like anything that you do to manage everything like properly in time? Oh, so you mean like- um, Do you have any of... advice like how to yeah, manage everything and get it done in a timely manner? Yeah, so my thing is, um, so I have the individual projects which I work on. Obviously, I do get help from a lot of people, uh, but so far, most of the things I've been doing on my own, and one thing I do a lot is, well, something I've learned as I moved into the industry, because I was in academia previously, is I manage my calendar, and I make sure my calendar is always updated, and that when I want to spend an hour or two on something, I spend an hour or two on that particular task. I, I really, really, like, this is how I've been working, and I've been producing all this stuff. So I guess I'm so, so strict about um, the things that I want to do at certain time. So for instance, right now, I went above the one hour. Um, that's, that's already on the red zone for me, or it's kind of like a red flag for me. Um, but I don't mind doing it because it's just, a, this, this call would be useful for people. Uh, but this is sort of the things that I do. I really, really manage my calendar, make sure I manage my time really, really well. And when I have a question, um, I don't want to spend too much time with that question. What I do is I would ask that question to someone that I think knows. I do that, a lot of reaching out to people um, so that I get the material that I want. And I have that constant you know, theme. And I think I've spoken about it on Twitter that when you have something that you want to ask someone, introduce yourself in a nice way and, and talk to people in a nice way. Uh, people really care, generally care about other people, you know. And, and once you behave like that and you ask your question, you're going to get an answer at some point. You have to try it. Sometimes you don't get an answer right away. But if you want to know things and you want to get answers to things really quickly, ask around. That's why we have the community to just ask and, and you get a response. So these are different ways I use. Yeah, thanks. Sure. So I have a question. Hey, how about collaborations with other researchers? Yeah, that's the question that came up. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, for all of that, I mean, this is just one community. We have so many different communities out there. 
Um, I, I do think that our projects, we can strengthen our projects and by strengthening our projects, we you know, consequently also help other communities in that process. Definitely, I, I, I'm a huge uh, believer of that. Okay, any other questions? All right, so what, I, what I'm gonna do now is, because um, I saw some of you put your names here, um, I'm, let's see if I can find your names in Slack, because that would be tough if I can find your names, but I'll try my best to find your names. And also just reach out to me on Slack and send me a direct message. It's at Elvis, just send me a direct message, tell me what you're interested in doing, and um, just let me know also if you don't feel too comfortable maybe putting your name here, or you don't know exactly what it is, or you wanna know more about it, and you also want some guidance, we are now for it. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this and then guide you through the whole process and you're gonna learn and you're gonna become a contributor and you're gonna help out as well. So the whole idea is to have this community where you know I don't I don't wanna like be here and sitting all the time and talking and talking because I can talk all day. My job is about training people. <laughs> I can do this all day. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that um, other people also uh, take responsibility and help out all these efforts. So I think that's where we can have um, more impact the stuff that we're doing. Okay, no questions? Good, thanks. Thank you very much. All right, well, I'll see you. Thank you very much for your time and thanks for being patient and thanks for showing a lot of interest as well. Um, I know I've communicated some of you already, so thanks for all that you're doing. I really appreciate it. I mean, the community appreciates that stuff, to be honest. Like, And I'm trying to share all the stuff that we're posting through all the different channels, Medium, Twitter. Um, yeah, just, just keep asking as well if you have any questions on that one. Um, yeah, and I look forward to, to work with you together on this one. Okay, bye-bye. Same. Thank bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for organizing. Thank you.